Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And thanks for the opportunity to be with you to share a few thoughts in setting the tone for our panel discussion this morning. I want to thank the organizing partners uh, for inviting me uh, to make these very brief remarks. I also want to in particular congratulate you for your investment in thought leadership. Um, platforms like this give an opportunity to have a dispassionate, evidence-based and informed discourse, which hopefully should lead to some resolution that would move our society forward. Um, it's also interesting because very often we in the media turn the light on other segments of the economy. And today you have elected to turn the light uh, on us for some introspection. On a lighter note, I'm told that since uh, March last year, any time I take the podium, all I talk about is COVID. So when you invited me and you added COVID to the theme, I was of the opinion that you want to cement my COVID credentials. Um, I'll do my best not to announce case counts and government restrictions, but to share a few thoughts on how the African economy can recover and in so doing, um, the role of the media and marketing communications. The question of what brings about economic growth and development is one that economists have been battling with for centuries now. Uh, from Adam Smith in 1776, who was theorizing about peace and justice and low taxes, through Keynes and Ricardo and Marshall, who are now introducing elements like infrastructure and natural resources, savings, uh, availability of labor, it has been thought that there is a theory and a path which, when employed, economies can grow or recover very quickly and create prosperity for their people. But every now and then we find ourselves asking, if the theory is that simple and easy to replicate, why are there several economies that are not growing as we would imagine or are not recovering as we would imagine? It is, ladies and gentlemen, in my humble view, because the question of generating economic growth is not as simple as is imagined. In recent years, efforts have been made to focus some academic attention on the role of the media and the role of advertising in generating or in affecting economic growth and development. I think one of the first to theorize about this was the Indian economist Amartya Sen. Uh, between 1984 and 1999, a couple of publications that uh, Sen put out in discussion of the paper Prevention of Famine. And then since then, you have seen increasingly a lot of academic research into the real role and the impact that the media and marketing communications can make when it comes to economic growth and development. The World Bank in 2002 published what they call Right to Tell, the role of mass media in economic development. Wilbur Schramm, 2014, media's development role in uh, social, economic, and political progress. Ladies and gentlemen, in all of these, the literature is rich and clear that without the media and marketing communications adequately playing the role of positive amplification, our full potential in economic growth and development may not be achieved. This means that even in ordinary times, if we are to fully achieve our economic growth and development potential, strong marketing communications and media support is required. And in times like this, after a pandemic, even more. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is ever a time that we need to examine the role of media and marketing communications within the context of what it takes to unleash our full economic potential, that time is now. If there's ever a time to interrogate the true impact of the work of the media and marketing communications in stimulating growth, development, and improvement in the quality of lives, that time is now. For two main reasons. First of all, it's because we are in extremely extraordinary times. There have only been fewer times in global economic history that we have had such a major economic downturn across the world, including in Africa. The IMF, for example, describes the COVID-19 pandemic as a crisis like no other. And this is partly because in response to the potentially more devastating health crisis, the measures that governments have had to take have plunged the world into an economic recession worse than that of the Great Depression of the 1930s. Sub-Saharan African economies contracted by an unprecedented 2.4%. The global economy contracted by about 3.5% in 2020. 
And with poverty levels already high, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, the need to recover now and quickly is extremely high. Additionally, we are also in times of unprecedented media penetration and media impact all over the world. One thing happens in Kabul, and within seconds, you are seeing it on your television on Sunday morning in Accra. Not only has traditional media percolated all over the continent, but social media is even going faster. Social media penetration is increasingly becoming the source of news to many on our continent. It's now at 45% in North Africa, 41% in Southern Africa, 16% in West Africa in January 2021, according to the media research organization Statista. We are therefore at the intersection of an unprecedented need to engineer an economic recovery across Africa at a time when media penetration is deepest. And we cannot discount the impact that media and marketing communications can have to spare us on or to pull us back in this enterprise. And that's why I think that this conversation at this time is critical. Throughout global economic history, the world has been through some times of crisis and recovery. Recovery, the pace of recovery, and even the extent of recovery is determined by many factors, including the interaction between the efforts of government and media. The Great Depression of the 1930s had significantly negative economic impact in the Americas and Europe. An estimated 15 million people lost their jobs in America alone. Over 20,000 bankruptcies were recorded, a failure of major banks in Europe and in America. Primarily, governments responded with major economic stimulus programs, such as the Industrialization Agenda of Europe and what they called the New Deal by Franklin Roosevelt in the USA. There's little literature on the role of media and marketing communications in that specific agenda, but anecdotal evidence suggests that a strong rallying of the nations around the recovery effort to get the business community and the citizenry and the general public to buy into the recovery program and to participate makes an impact in the success story. The Great Recession of 2007 to 2009 was no different. With a contraction of nearly 4% of U.S. GDP in quarter 4, 2008, slowdown of global growth by about 5% in 2007, and losses of about $1.5 trillion, the collapse of banks and credit markets, there was a need for strong multilateral government intervention to engineer recovery. Now, while the media played a critical role in examining the recovery efforts, the propriety of the recovery efforts, it also provided deep enlightenment on the efforts at removing the systemic risks in the financial system. In particular, the literature shows a quick pickup in consumer confidence with firmer confidence in the housing markets by 2009, aided by strong marketing communications on the path to recovery. Even the international debt crisis of 1982 to 1989 was similar. It is argued that the recklessness of creditors, mismanagement of debtors on the global stage culminated in that crisis. It was repeated in Mexico, in Asia, Brazil, Argentina between 1999-2002. But in all of this, a clear exercise to carry the people along, supported by a robust media and marketing communications ecosystem, aided the journey. Ladies and gentlemen, the media through all of these examples that I've given has played two significant roles. One, influencing, and two, reflecting. And here I want to quote um, some of the texts that literature provides on exactly what the media has done in these enterprises. I want to quote first from Karma, Asia Pacific 2008. It says, the fact is that the media can create societal and market opinions. The media can influence a financial crisis either by provoking and sustaining a longer economic recovery because media has a tendency to produce the stories to that effect, or by initiating recovery through the distribution of positive images, thereby stimulating and encouraging government action to solve problems. The media employs output of economic organizations, governments, companies, etc., in their coverage. How we report the aims, the strategies, 
the evaluation, the outcomes. They can fuel or they can distort the picture of and for the general public. And in return, it can become the new stimulus of how the economic actors, the general public, and even governments further act in this recovery cycle. For any set of interventions to be successful, it has been observed, it must gain the goodwill and the support of the people. And the key value drivers such as business and citizens will only support these recovery policies if they understand it, and understand it especially through credible media. This means policy makers must adopt broad-based, proactive, robust, nuanced, and repetitive marketing communication strategies to get everybody on board these recovery programs. But it also means that media must reflect these realities to the people and complement these efforts by helping the effort to rebuild genuinely, highlighting the shared responsibilities in rebuilding, and the common benefits when we successfully rebuild. This is what the history of recoveries tell us, and the theory, I dare say, will not change. The COVID-19 pandemic has no doubt brought twin crises to the world. First, the health crisis, which threatens lives, and second, the economic crisis, which threatens livelihoods. I recall from the very first night when we recorded our cases here in Ghana, throughout the journey, that we have traveled in containing the health crisis, I believe Ghana has done fairly well. But this has been based on two major things. One, the strong health-based interventions anchored on testing, tracing, and treating. And two, the support of media and marketing relations. It is clear that when the media stepped up to the plate and played their positive role in influencing the behavior of society, when the media focused heavily on reporting facts, heavily on getting properly accredited experts to do the analysis of the facts, heavily on amplifying the robust marketing communications efforts from government and health practitioners, the evidence is that together we have made laudable gains in this fight. And this is exactly what we will need in the second crisis, the economic crisis. Like has always been done, governments like in Ghana and across Africa will roll out their intervention programs. But once again, we will need strong marketing communications and media complement to succeed. The state efforts include vaccination in the midst of a global vaccine supply chain shortage. It includes opening up the economy as much as possible for resumption of normal economic activity albeit with the challenges of a good number of people who are not complying with the, um, uh, with the preventive etiquette. It includes improving domestic resource mobilization to enhance our ability to invest in healthcare infrastructure and economic avenues at a time when people are feeling the economic pinch. It sounds like a contradiction. It also includes investing heavily in initiatives that will yield high quick growth for the many and not the few. It includes balancing the opportunity to trade across Africa with the need to mitigate the risk of cross-country COVID infections. Ladies and gentlemen, these efforts are not easy, and government will not even pretend that they are easy. In a robust media and democratic culture like ours, you have to convince a citizen who will not protect himself and who could die if you don't vaccinate him, yet who is highly holding you to account to all the laws that you have to do whatever is necessary to get him vaccines, and you need the help of the media to succeed at that. You have to convince the very person who refuses to wear masks that the economy needs to be reopened so he doesn't go hungry. And that you cannot even lock up everybody who does not wear a mask. And you need the help of the media and marketing communications to succeed at that. You have to convince the 33,000 engineers, lawyers, accountants, and other professionals who are not paying tax, according to the Ghana Revenue Authority, yet are asking for everything to be fixed, that they have to pay their due if we are to rake in the 10% of GDP and lower our borrowing, and you need the help of the marketing communications professionals and the media to succeed at that. You have to convince a Ghanaian businessman who is looking forward to tapping into the Africa continental free trade opportunities that we have to explore Zoom calls and other non-personal trade mechanisms because we just cannot do business as usual. These efforts are not easy. 
two things, ladies and gentlemen, that I'd like to draw your attention to that we need to attend to at this time are, one, the need to reverse the tendency for public policymakers to assume that these things are obvious, and the media and the public and everybody must know them. It's not true. We must consistently engage in strong marketing communications and get the support of the media to get total understanding of these things. We must also deal with the second issue of the tendency of some of our colleagues in the practice to think that our only job is to be a check on government and to highlight the ills of the private sector. Policymakers must understand that now more than ever, there's a need to communicate, to communicate, and to communicate if we are to carry everybody along. Our colleagues in the media must also understand that we are in this boat together. And part of our job is to positively influence the society to support the recovery effort. At a time when the media landscape has been significantly negatively impacted and somewhat changed because of COVID, revenues have dwindled and competition has increased with technology disruptions to traditional media. One of the consequences is that public interest media has been one of the biggest victims and needs to be attended to. Attention must be given to support the media, recognize and play the very important role that they have to play in the recovery effort. Attention must be given to aid the media understand and convey to the public the peculiar difficulties of today and the genuine efforts that all must make if we are to recover. Attention needs to be given to support the media to adequately balance the obligation of reflecting and positively influencing society. The media throughout economic history has been integral in the recovery process. ISA, for example, writes that the media creates two types of behavior in society, approach and avoidance. Approach behavior is when the media provides positive, explicit judgments about an economic situation or crisis, which may influence people to become more confident and positive about the economy. Such positive news may, for example, encourage the unemployed to seek employment or businesses to expand their operations or people to go into entrepreneurship, urge the private sector to take advantage of interventions that drive growth. On the other hand, the media can also engineer avoidance behavior, and that consists of media providing negative explicit judgment about an economic situation or crisis. Negative explicit judgment pertaining to high unemployment or the instability of financial markets, for example, may provoke a climate of fear and apprehension, deterring people from seeking employment or investing in financial markets. When we instill fear and negativity as our primary content, the consumer confidence required to aid our collective recovery and the advertising revenues that make us survive as businesses are challenged. Such negative publicity arises partly due to the unhealthy competition between media outlets. To be the competition, some outlets select stories to play on the emotions of the consuming public, which could potentially interfere with attempts to rally all us up and rise together. It is therefore part of the role of the media to eschew all forms of misleading publications particularly about the economy and about the private sector, because it deters investors, both foreign and local. It deters the ability of the general public to participate in the economic recovery effort. And it will lead to the dwindling of our industry revenues as well. Now is the good time to show up strong marketing communications, not just by government and policymakers, as I mentioned earlier, but also by the private sector. It's true that in times of economic crisis, one of the first budgets to be cut is the advertising budget. The effect is weakened media that may be prone to undesired journalism. But the literature is true that now is the time for private sector to show up advertising and marketing communication efforts. Because not only would it help the general economic recovery, it will help your business recover faster. As far back as 1927, advertising executive Roland Vail published a report in the Harvard Business Review 
detailing his study of companies during the 1923 recession. And let me share just a few parts of it with you. Uh, they found, for example, that companies who continued to advertise came out 20% ahead of where they are pre-recession, of where they were pre-recession, while those who reduced advertising ended up 7% below their pre-recession levels. So to the major brands out there, the theory is counterproductive, that these are the times, rather, that you should show up your advertising and marketing communications. And I believe that our colleagues in the media will applaud you if you do that for them. McGraw-Hill's study of brands during the U.S. recession of the early 1980s also revealed that out of about 600 businesses analyzed, those who continued to advertise during the 1980 to 82 recession were about 256% ahead of their competition that chose not to advertise. So while we encourage brands to rather step up their advertising spend, we also further encourage the marketing communications industry that now is the time that you have to invest in innovative ways of delivering messages on behalf of your brands. Innovative ways of creating value for your brand clients. The same old campaigns and concepts may not cut it. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the most critical time in recent economic history on our continent. A time to rally round the flag and indeed rally round the continent-wide effort to recover. This requires common purpose from policymakers, private sector players, and the media. It is the only way to guarantee our common success. On the part of government, we will continue to provide support for the industry through fair regulation, capacity enhancement programs, and support to the general economy, which will in turn help the media and marketing communications industry. Help us to help you to help the nation in the end. Thank you for your time.